As you're being seated, please turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 9. Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 9. And as always, we desire to worship the Lord in the way that he desires to be worshipped. Amen? Amen. There's, and there's no better way to do that than to look into God's word to consider how we ought to worship him. And this morning we'll be looking at Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 9. <clears throat> and it reads, And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Amen. So throughout Israel's history, God has been incredibly kind to Israel. He showed his kindness to them through their father Abraham, their federal head under the Abrahamic covenant. And he made covenant with Abraham. And he multiplied and preserved the children of Israel. He also showed his kindness to them in Egypt and taking them out of Egypt, bearing them, as the Lord says, on eagles' wings bringing them to himself. He swept Israel off of her feet and he delivered, he delivered her from Egypt. And Egypt was the greatest power, the greatest power on earth at the time. Probably at that point, the greatest power to date that anyone could think of. And God here, in this scripture, he extends his kindness to Israel in the Mosaic Covenant. And it was to be a means of blessing to them. And the Mosaic Covenant is focused primarily around its laws. God gave them the moral law that applies to all men, but he also gave them ceremonial and civil laws as well. And one of the highlights of those laws was the sacrificial system. And all of these laws were to be followed by Israel. They were to receive blessings for obedience and cursings for disobedience. The reward for their obedience were that they were to be a special treasure above all people, a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. When obedient, they would have great prosperity. And when disobedient, the, the well of that prosperity would dry up and they would receive cursing from the Lord. And we know the story, don't we? Unfortunately, Israel, they ultimately failed. They broke their covenant. But when we think of the Mosaic covenant, the Mosaic covenant points to a newer and greater covenant in the future, doesn't it? It points to the new covenant in Jesus Christ. And he's established that new covenant with us, his people. And it's not qu quite like the Mosaic Covenant. See, unlike a law being merely written on tablets of stone, God's law is written on the hearts of the recipients of the new covenant. See, God changes the hearts. He regenerates his people under the new covenant. 
His spirit indwells the people under the new covenant. All Christians have the spirit indwelling them. Christ himself fulfills the law in the new covenant. You see, under the old covenant, they had the sacrificial system. Many animals were killed for the sins of the people. And none of those animals could ultimately atone for sin. But under the new covenant, there was only one sacrifice, a full and final sacrifice in Jesus Christ. And all sin for all of God's people is done away with. And under the new covenant, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. As Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, we are set apart as a wonderful kingdom, set apart specifically and specially as God's people. We ought to rejoice in the position that we have in Christ. When we think of the Mosaic Covenant, we ought to think future of the new covenant of which we are under. Now, I want to propose something to you. When God gives Moses this covenant and tells him to tell the people, he gives his, the first motivation that he gives the people of Israel is the fact that he brought them out of Egypt. He bore them on eagles' wings and brought them to himself. Has God not done that very same thing for us in a much greater way? He did not merely deliver us as, a, as an ethnic people group or as a nation. He delivered us from slavery to sin. He delivered us from the wickedness of our own flesh. He delivered us from his own wrath, which we deserve poured out on us. And he has given us the greatest gift of being his people, his sons, his daughters. So if Israel was to obey and to worship God, ethnic Israel, how much more should we obey and worship? How much louder should our songs be than Israel's? How much more fervent should our prayers be than Israel's? How, how much more attentive should we be to the word of God than Israel, having received so much greater of a gift in the new covenant? So my brethren, I want to exhort you to worship the Lord this morning, corporately together with all of your heart. Let's pray. Father in heaven, what a great gift we have received in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have indeed swept us off of our feet, your bride, the church, Lord Jesus. You have brought us to yourself. And we, we pray, Lord, help us, help us to worship you as you ought to be worshiped. May our worship be pleasing in your sight, Lord. May our singing be filled with joy. May our prayers be fervent. And may we be ever more attentive to the word of God. For we have received such a great gift. Such a great gift. So help us, Lord, to worship you as you desire to be worshipped. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.